and Rising. We have a marvelous show for you today with several guests, including Marianne Williamson. So we'll be very excited to get to that soon. But first, let's start with our top story. All right. Well, Robbie, President Biden quietly told donors yesterday that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has to change his ways, per reporting from Reuters. Biden remarked, Israel's security can rest on the United States, but right now it has more than the United States. It has the European Union. It has Europe. It has most of the world. But they're starting to lose that support by indiscriminate bombing that takes place. The New York Times found that over the past decade, Netanyahu encouraged Qatar to send millions of dollars a month to Gaza, money that helped prop up the Hamas government there, because he calculated that the existence of Hamas would help him endlessly avoid negotiations for a Palestinian state. Despite his private remarks, President Biden, however, is still putting on a united front with Israel. Here he is at the White House this weekend. 35 years ago, I said, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist, and I'm a Zionist. <laughs> You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. A senior advisor to the Netanyahu government recently sat down with CNN to answer Biden's criticisms of how Israel, to answer to Biden's criticisms of how Israel is handling its war in Gaza. Let's watch that. I want you to react to a specific remark from President Biden. He says, uh, and I quote, this is the most conservative government in Israel's history adding that the Israeli government does not want a two-state solution. Mark, is President Biden wrong? Well, the, the position of my prime minister is that the Palestinians should have all the power to rule themselves and none of the power to hurt Israel. And that second part is, is also very important. As you saw, uh, Israelis are still in shock from what happened to us on October 7th, uh, where Palestinians crossed the border from Gaza and butchered our people. I think it's important though, to put this, this disagreement with the Americans into context. Uh, we agree on the need to defeat Hamas, that Israel is within its right and within its obligation to our people to destroy Hamas, that we have to see a new situation in the Gaza Strip. And I think it's not impossible that when we, as we you know, work together, that we can find a way to move ahead in a post Hamas Gaza scenario. So you, it might be hard to tell listening to that answer, but he did not affirm that Netanyahu has any interest in a two-state solution. So we know from other reporting that he has been in Israel making the pitch that you should rely on me because I'm the one who will thwart a two-state solution. When asked directly about that, um, uh, that was Mark uh, Regev, uh, says, well, we want Palestinians to have all the rights they can have as long as they cannot hurt uh, Israel. Now, that seems reasonable if you think, well, nobody should be hurting anybody. But obviously, our state and every other state has the ability to hurt other states. We have the largest military in the history of the world. So what he's saying is, no, there cannot be an independent Palestinian state that would have an army and all the other freedoms that all other states in the world are allotted. And at the same time that the spokesperson is taking that position, that Netanyahu is taking that position. Joe Biden is facing the American public and saying, well, don't worry, we're all working toward a two-state solution together, knowing full well, as we know from these private conversations, that not Netanyahu is absolutely not interested in that. Yeah, it makes, frankly, it makes Joe Biden look very weak and feckless yeah. that, uh, that he says we're going to continue to give them money and then just quietly hope maybe sort of they change a long-standing policy commitment that their government has to 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 not a two-state solution netanyahu cannot be more clear that he does not support a state two-state solution and in fact has a long history of 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 implicitly even with funding yes. propping up hamas in order to delegitimize the idea of a two-state solution i would argue that was a very bad course of action that helped lead to the massacre on october 7th and now dealing with a situation where uh where yes it does not seem viable at the moment it would it would take um working more closely with the the plo or some more moderate palestinian faction given what happened um israel is fairly committed understandably to the destruction of hamas although it's going to have massive civilian casualties in the course of getting there but what 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 is biden doing what does he think do you think a different president could get a different response out of israel you've talked you know in the past actually reagan and george hw bush mm -hmm. were, were not whatever israel wants and we're not going to say anything about it they didn't have that attitude about it 
Um, uh, you know, Trump, for all, it, it, it accused of being such a destabilizing force on the uh, national, uh, on the international level. You know, oh my God, our, our other countries are so, they don't even know how to react to the U.S. anymore because he's so, he careens so wildly from conversation to conversation. It's so threatening to us. Um, of course, you know, we've pointed out all the ways in which that doesn't necessarily track, that there can be a you know, benign, gentle, business-as-usual kind of Bidenism that is not actually making America safer or exerting really any uh, influence, uh, a pro-U.S. influence on the rest mm -hmm. of the world. Yes, and not that this should be the primary concern when, you know, upwards of 18,000 people have been killed, but and it's hurting Biden domestically, politically. There is really no upside for, uh, for him here. It's difficult to understand what's motivating him. His people at home don't want him to do it, with over 66% uh, of Americans now supporting a ceasefire. And that number is growing. The global community overwhelmingly supports a ceasefire. We see that with these um, subsequent, uh, these repeated resolutions at the UN, where the rest of the world overwhelmingly votes in favor of a ceasefire that would be uh, linked to the release of hostages, which most people in the world see as a primary goal. But that does not seem to be Israel's priority, right? The ho they had hostage release successful hostage release during the, f the few days ceasefire that uh, occurred uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday. That worked. Um, however you want to frame it, that worked. They got hostages back, and now these UN ceasefires that would also be uh, contingent on the release of hostages, all hostages rejected by Israel and the United States. So what is the game plan here from Biden? He's bleeding support in key states like Michigan, largely because of uh, Arab voters who see themselves as being, uh, Biden as being on the wrong side of history, but not exclusively because of those voters. It's also young voters across the board, and frankly, an increasingly average part of the American electorate. And you have Biden. The statements last night were so galvanizing online and across the uh, across the country last night because you hear Biden simultaneously saying, admitting, Israel is carrying out, quote, indiscriminate bombing. None of the hiding behind, they're, they're doing uh, precision attacks. Israel does the most any country could ever do to try to save civilians, um, human shields. None of that language. You heard, you heard Biden seemingly attribute blame to Israel by saying it's carrying out, quote, indiscriminate bombing at the same time that he says there is, quote, no plans to shift its position, the US, United States' position, and draw any red lines around the transfer of weapons and munitions to Israel, weapons that sure. Israel is using to conduct indiscriminate bombing. According to Biden. According to Biden. That's the, it seems like he's agreeing with the criticism but then not agreeing that there should be any kind of policy. Right. But you could reject the criticism, you right. could, as many, uh, many pro-Jewish voices do, as many conservatives do, as some Democrats do. You could say that, um, that uh, no, we should support Israel as they continue this war against a terrorist organization that attacked them. You could also say, as I think many of my more um, non-interventionist aligned people on the right say, you know what, they're going to do what they're going to do. It's not really our business, and we sh don't need to give them unlimited support in doing so. We have a lot of problems at home we should we should be dealing with. That's neither an endorsement nor condemnation. That's just your problem. It's elsewhere in the world. We need to be focused on what's going on here in America. A, a position, I would argue, is is very popular um, uh, among, like, Broad swaths of the of the population and didn't get enough attention when the when you know neoconservatism was the reigning orthodoxy of the Republican Party. People like Tucker Carlson and others have helped really puncture that and, and shown mm -hmm. that there's a lot of Americans who feel differently. But Biden has put himself in this weird position where. He, he's supporting them. He clearly can't affect them very much and agrees with some of the criticism and is suffering a lot of is, or some significant hemorrhaging of support among his coalition but for if, it. But he, he can affect them, right? The, the white phosphorus that um, Israel dropped on Gaza illegally is U.S. white phosphorus. The bombs that Israel is f dropping on Gaza are U American bombs. He cannot simultaneously hold this position or try to hide behind a projected opinion that he really can't control the actions of another country when we are literally paying for the bombs that are being used to kill 18,000 civilians. It's just not a sustainable position. And I think that is why public opinion has turned so aggressively against Israel and against Joe Biden both. One other part of the clip that we have yet to touch on is uh, his remarks from last weekend where he uh, told uh, the press, you don't have to be Jewish to be a Zionist. I'm a proud Zionist. And many people were picking up from that, that this is validating many people's arguments, including many people on the left, who say, 
anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, right? If Joe Biden, who obviously isn't Jewish, who is Catholic, is saying, I'm a proud Zionist, this is exactly why people are resisting the idea of conflating, as Congress just voted to do, um, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. This is objection to a political project, which anybody can agree to. So many um, conservative Christian fundamentalists in the United States of America are some of the most core base supporters of Zionist politics in this country. Out, outnumbering, frankly, the number of Jewish supporters guess, how in this would country. You, and I, I mean this not as a gotcha at all. Yeah, how sure. would you define being, I'm a, I'm being, I'm a Zionist, I'm pro-Zionism. What, what is meant by that? Yeah, the, I, many people would have different definitions. Okay. I think personally talking about it as not just the existence of a state where Jewish people can be safe in the region, but one that is a Jewish state that accords specific rights to Jewish people. That means that other people who live there who aren't Jewish are by definition, second-class citizens and uh, creating apartheid conditions for them. So that's why many people, when they, they bristle at the idea of saying, well, there's nothing wrong with being anti-Zionist. Of course I have to be anti-Zionist because I reject the idea of any kind of state that would privilege the, the treatment, the rights, the privileges of one group of people because of some immutable characteristic, whether it's their ethnicity or their religion or however you want to characterize Judaism, over another group. Hmm. Uh, and that's why they say, well, it can't be why you're describing it as genocide, I'm not saying the Jewish population there should be exterminated when I say it's the river to the sea. I'm simply saying that everyone should be able to live there with equal rights, however the national lines are carved, whether it's in an Israeli state or in a Palestinian state. Um, but that the current conditions, where that quite obviously isn't the case, shouldn't be allowed to persist, or shouldn't persist because of the, the political and self-determination of the people who are living there currently. Mm. All right, we'll have more rising right after this.